Welcome to another episode of how to build a compiler with LLVM and MLIR. In the previous episode, uh, we had a brief look over how to create a new dialect in MLIR and how to use that dialect to generate uh, some IR. Uh, we created a new dialect called SLIR with just few operations and we managed to generate the IR we want based of uh, SLIR. That was the first step uh, into the MLIR world. And in, uh, as the next step for us, we need to use that dialect and lower that dialect into uh, other dialects of MLIR, built-in dialects of MLIR, or even directly uh, lower it to LLVM IR. But before we can do that, we need to know more about the pass infrastructure. So our episode today is all about passes and we're going to postpone the uh, lowering and the concept of lowering to the next episode. Before we continue with our discussion today, uh, a quick update about what happened in past two weeks. I was working like I was working on the JIT and out of nowhere randomly I noticed that the binary size of uh, Serene is quite large it was like 85 megabytes so I was like okay I need to investigate this thing and during the course of an investigation I had to refactor the entire build system so I refactored the CMake files and everything they're quite nice now uh, much cleaner and uh, well structured and I managed to lower it down to 60 megabytes, but as a result, so the reason why uh, the binary is so big at the moment is that in order to link the object files, uh, I use Clang, not as a like a dynamic process. I, I link against some of the libraries inside Clang to figure out what, uh, what linker is installed in the host machine and use that linker to link all the object files together. Um, it's not like optimal, but I had to do it because I didn't want to deal with uh, discovering different uh, linkers and to deal with the different interface they might uh, expose and all that. Clang already uh, does it, so I use the same stuff in Clang. Um, but recently in LLVM 14, apparently LLD actually exposes an API for the front end to use LLD directly. So I can call to that API and ask LLD to link all the object files I, I have. Uh, and I can actually link statically against that interface. So part of LLD will, will be uh, in my binary. Um, which in turn is going to be like, I guess, uh, smaller than Clang. That's just a guess. So based on some uh, quick calculation and some estimates, I guess like the binary size will be down to 20 megabytes or so, but we'll see. As a result of uh, changing the uh, build system and refactoring the CMake files now, I moved some directories around. So we used to have a, a bin directory in the root directory that contained the certain C uh, binary. Now I moved it to SRC directory. So if you look into the SRC, we have two new directories, uh, libserine and serene C. Libserine is like the core functionality as we had before, I just renamed it to libserine. It's an object direct, uh, object library, meaning that uh, CMake will just compile all the CPP files into objects and then link them with any target that we have, any binary target that we have. And at the moment, we have just one binary target, which is like, not binary target, that's a wrong term, but I mean, uh, native executable binary right now. And that's in C. Um, this is like the old bin directory in the root. I moved it in here, and uh, I'm pretty sure I'm going to refactor this thing uh, in the future. It's not nice at the moment. It just uh, gets the job done. Um, and yeah, that's it. Like that's the entire uh, thing I did in past two weeks. It, it mostly I was investigating the size issue 
uh, and t this week I have to go back working on the JIT a little bit. Anyway, uh, continuing on the topic of today, what is a pass? So, a pass, pass is a concept in both LLVM and MLIR, and a pass is the unit of transformation and optimization uh, in both uh, LLVM and MLIR. While both of them have a concept of pass and they're quite similar to each other, even the API is almost identical, almost identical. But uh, the thing is, um, passes in MLIR, since MLIR is a, like a high level IR and uh, like it can like the, uh, any IR, any dialect in MLIR contains operations and some stuff that LLVM IR uh, doesn't. That makes it, uh, that makes the passes in MLIR a bit different than LLVM. But the concept is the same. The, a pass is some entity that we use to transform and uh, optimize a form of IR to another form. Um, if we have a look at, oh, by the way, today we're going to spend most of our time talking about MLIR passes, but most of the things that we talk about today applies to LLVM passes as well. Uh, but we might have another episode in the future talking about uh, LLVM uh, passes uh, only, but we'll see. If we look at the, if we look at any compiler around us, like the main thing that a compiler does is to read some code, do something with it, and create a, like a result. That do something with it is kind of uh, like the bigger picture is really simple. It reads the file, transform that uh, input source code to an AST, then transform that AST to maybe another form of AST, then transform the AST into a, a form of IR. And this loop goes on till we get to the target code. It's kind of obvious to see that the whole compilation process is like we can break it down into a smaller pieces, a smaller logic, uh, uh, like pieces of logic that we can apply on each step and generate a new result off of the result of the previous step, right? Um, it's kind of similar to function composition in math and it's like we can abstract away the logic and only think about different stage, like different stages in the like a compilation process. So we can kind of abstractly think about it as a pipeline of functions, a function composition that each function is responsible for reading the result of the previous function as the input and do some optimization or transformation to that input and generate a new output and pass it down to another uh, function. Basically, each function that we're talking right now, uh, talking about right now, each abstraction that we kind of encapsulate some logic in it is similar as passes. So passes are some abstractions in MLIR and LLVM that operate on the LL operate on the IR level and read the IR related to them or corresponding to them and do some transformation and generate a new one. In order to like categorize and group those passes together, we need something called pass manager, or as I like to call them uh, pipelines because uh, that's how uh, MLIR documentation refers to them sometimes and it makes more sense to be honest. So we can create pipelines of transformation out of different passes. Each pass has a logic to do some sort of transformation on the IR itself. So we, we can group them together on pass managers and create pipelines. We can have several pipelines and we can nest them inside each other uh, to get what we want out of uh, our major pipeline. So 
we know that all what uh, like we know that most of the thing that a compiler does happens in stages and happens in passes. Sorry. It's kind of obvious to see that most we're going to spend our majority of time in uh, writing passes or working on different passes, basically to transform our uh, different shapes of IR into a final IR that we need, which is LLVM IR in our case. And even on LLVM IR, we're going to optimize it. Uh, run some passes on it to get to a, like a optimal version of uh, op optimal and finalized version of LLVM IR and finally pass it down again to another pass manager to generate object files out of that IR. So from now on, uh, uh, of course, when we, we're finished with the compiler wi wiring and the bare minimum compiler that we need, uh, we're going to spend most of our time uh, writing different passes that was the big picture that was like a gist of how past uh, passes works uh, in mlir but now uh, let's have a look at how we can actually define a path so there's two like any other places in llvm and uh, mlir there's two way to actually define a path either in c++ purely in c++ or via ODS. I, I didn't use ODS for uh, generating a pass yet, but based on the documentation and based on my previous experience with ODS, it must be much nicer than writing everything in C++. It, like it, it helps us to avoid a lot of boilerplate. But for now, uh, since all the passes that I have uh, in the sharing compiler right now, they all are... Uh, Kind of a specialized in loading SLIR and other dialects to each other to LLVM IR. I didn't need to uh, use ODS, but in the future, uh, I'm reckon that it's going to be much uh, nicer to write passes in ODS in compared to C++. Look at the documentation. There's plenty of documentation around how to define a pass in uh, ODS, but today we're going to look at the C++ stuff because that's what we're going to use in the next episode. So in, in MLIR, passes operate on operation level. So the operation itself is the main abstraction unit for transformation. When we create a pass, that pass operates on one operation at a time. Depends on the pass type. I'm going to talk about that in a bit. But it's not like that we can write a pass to operate like on an, a specific attribute a lot like among operations that's not the case so we can only write passes for on operation level not any further down so um in order to generate uh, to create a new pass we have to create a class that uh, that is a subclass of operation pass uh, there's some intermediate base classes that we can use they uh, kind of inherit from operation pass and do some boiler, boiler sorry do some boilerplate there and then we can subclass from them and take advantage of all the things that they've done but for now uh, we all we need to know is that we need to subclass from operation pass and override a function called run on operation that's all we need to do that's that's how we create a pass um, before we have a look at the actual implementation, not implementation, how we can define a pass in C++, there's a bunch of rules that a pass needs to follow. I, I just mentioned two of them, but there's a complete list in the documentation if you have a look. Basically, the reason behind these rules is that pass manager and uh, MLIR in general, when uh, they try to run passes on the source code on the IR, sorry. They use a multi-threaded model. So in order to stay thread safe and uh, kind of avoid any unnecessary 
issues in a multi-threaded environment we need to follow these rules for example we don't have to we shouldn't we must not have a global a state global mutable state for a pass or we shouldn't really uh, modify a modify the state of another operation which we are not working on uh, as the current operation unless it's nested inside the current operation and some other rules uh, have a look at the docs to figure out more about these rules and finally we have two type, types of uh, passes one are operation specific and the other one is operation agnostic if we take a look at how we can define a pass, uh, sorry, how can we uh, define a operation specific pass? I actually I took this uh, example from the official documentation, so you can read more about it there. But it's quite simple. There's a, a base class for uh, which is like a C what's the term? CRTS, I, I never get that uh, acronym right. Uh, it's kind of a interface-like uh, technique in C++. Uh, so this is just a base class. We pass the concrete type to it, which is our in, in our case is my uh, function pass. And then here is the actual base class, operation base. And as the t uh, te template argument, we passed function operation to it. So our new pass which is called my function pass only operates on function operations so when the pass manager is actually applying passes on the ir whenever it reaches to an, a function uh, operation it will apply this pass on that operation and it only works on function operation for example if we get to a i, I don't know like a constant operation this this pass won't be applied to that one and as i mentioned earlier we override the run on operation uh function member we get the current operation which should be a function operation and then since fu a function has like nested operations in them we can walk down the graph or walk down the tree and do some transformation there or even run another pipeline uh, on the nested operations Sorry. So uh, finally, we can register our uh, pass. It's not uh, mandatory to do so. Uh, for example, right now in Serene Compiler, I didn't register any of uh, my passes because if you, the whole purpose of reg uh, pass registration is that when you register your pass, you can actually uh, construct that pass via some like in a textual format like CLI, right? You can actually have some nice CLI uh, flags and arguments for your a specific pass. You can construct it, you can ask your compiler to run this specific uh, pass. But since like in Serene itself, since all the passes we have right now is dedicated to lowering the SLIR and other dialects to each other and to LLVM IR, they're kind of mandatory. But we don't have to register them because like it doesn't make sense uh, to like enable and disable them via CLI. Uh, they're mandatory. They, they have to be there. So that's why we uh, that's why I didn't register them. But uh, here's an option and you can register your pass. Actually, I'm going to talk about pass management at the end, but we can group some passes together for a specific purpose and register them that way. So for example, I can have a group of passes called O2 for optimization level two, right? And then when, when I register them with a, like a CLI argument, then it would be kind of nicer. I don't need to handle the uh, CLI arguments and par uh, parse them and things like that. I just can, uh use that flag which is like enable this pass manager o2 and run the pass manager with all the passes dedicated to optimization level two on the ir that's another actually that's a common uh use case for registering the passes and pass management pass managers and uh another type of uh, pass we have is operation agnostic 
meaning that it can run on any operation and the logic in this pass is not operation specific the definition is quite the same as uh, my function pass or an operation specific pass the only difference is that we don't pass any template argument so we're not kind of specifying what operation to operate on again we can over we should overwrite the run on operation and when we ask for the current operation with get operation instead of getting like a specific um, operation back we get a pointer to the operation class and then we can do the transformation here vice versa um so creating passes are quite simple but the tricky thing is how the transformation works in passes i'm not going to talk about them today because they deserve their own episode they're quite they can be quite complicated um there's like different a few different ways like uh pattern rewrite we can like match against them certain pattern and rewrite it to an, like a specific rewrite it in a specific way and like basically different uh, solutions we're going to have a look at uh, one of them in the future episode beside pa like in the pass infrastructure beside passes there are some other entities as well like analysis and uh, pass instrum instrumentation if i'm not uh, wrong I can't remember what uh, what is called uh, what that thing is called uh, precisely, but basically analysis are just like passes, but they don't transform anything. They're just the whole purpose of analysis are uh, is that like they collect metrics and data uh, about the IR and passes can actually reach out to them, query them, and get the state from them to do their magic, right? uh at this stage we didn't uh, use any any of the analysis in our uh, learning process and all that but in the future we're going to use them and uh, obviously talk about them in the video series and the pass instrumentation is like we can hook into the pass infrastructure there's like uh, some hooks when uh, pass manager runs the Dif runs different passes on the IR level. It's like it's more the the it works like web uh, what what it's called middleware, right? Uh, so there's different hooks like before running a pass, after running a pass, before like a starting a pipeline, after a starting a pipeline on the entire IR. We can uh, use those hooks to run some code there. I don't know, print out some stuff. Actually, MLIR itself uh, provides some nice feature there. There's a flag we can provide uh, to the compiler and ask for like print out the result of transformation after each pass, like print the IR after each pass. Uh, this kind of stuff, which we're going to have a look at in the next uh, episode. Uh, so there's plenty there. I, I, I recommend you to have a look at the documentation. And finally, one of the most important topics uh, we want, uh, like we need to talk about today, is pass management. So again, I took this code from the docu uh, official docs. This is how we actually define a pass manager. Obviously, since it's from the doc, we need something like this here, right? Or you you know what I mean. So here we're creating a pass manager by passing a context to it. This context is in fact MLIR context. So um, PM here is actually a pass manager, which is our root pass manager. Or uh, we can, like beside this, we can define it like this: pass a uh, context to it, and then define what operation we want this pass manager to operate on so at like in this example we're asking the pass manager to operate on uh built-in module like mlir module they're kind of uh synonym to each other and then we add our passes with add pass member function right now we're adding a pass called module pass my module pass uh, we have to pass a unique pointer uh, to our path. And here's the 
here's the nice thing about pass manager we can actually nest pass managers inside each other so pm this pm here is our root pass manager right it's the top level one we create a new pass manager called nested module pm which is like an ops specific pass manager right then uh, we want that uh, new pass manager to operate only on spi spi or vo oh, it's really hard to pronounce uh in the like a uh, we want that new pass manager to work only on module ops uh, operations of this specific dialect in here right and we add some passes to that uh new operation uh, new pass manager sorry and then we can create another pass manager and nest it to the previous one that operates only on function op uh, operations with some passes right so we created a, like a tree of pass managers, tree of pipelines that each operate on a, like a specific level of the tree and do some stuff and leave the rest to other passes. And finally, uh, we have we we would end up with a, like a module when we generate our uh, first le level of uh, IR somehow. Like we're going to see a concrete example in the next episode. But I mean, since module operation is the root uh, operation for any MLIR dialect, we end up our dialect and our IR must have a module. We can then call the run member function on that module. So this way, our root uh, pass manager will start applying the passes on the module itself and do the rewrites in place, right? So after if this thing doesn't fail after this uh run like uh, after invoking run here our module will be a transform version of the previous one so uh, that's how pass management works in mlir uh, we're going to see an uh, see an example in the next episode um i guess that's enough for uh, the kind of for past infrastructure and the stuff that we need to know before before we can talk about lowering in the next episode um please uh if you find my work uh find my work interesting please leave a like and subscribe to my channel if you have any question please reach out to me and i'm looking for i look forward to your uh feedback as well have a great day. See you in the next episode.